I'm happy to welcome back to the program Peter Schweizer. He's the president of the Government Accountability Institute and the author of Profiles in Corruption, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite. Peter, great to see you again. I'm with you. Thanks for having me, Stu. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, you come on an important day as we have an incredible artiste, Hunter Biden, <laughs> who's getting ready to sell his very valuable paintings uh, to people all across the world. Who knows who could buy them? And this is creating a bit of a conundrum for the White House as they try to somehow justify uh, this whole process and come up with ethics rules that will govern them. I mean, this whole process is a mess already, isn't it? It is. And, you know, look, you have to give uh, the Bidens uh, a little bit of credit. I mean, this is absolute genius. Uh, you know, Hunter Biden got in trouble because he was taking all this foreign money. He wasn't qualified for what he was allegedly doing. He had no skill set. So what they've done now is they've morphed into the art world. Well, what's great about the art world is it's completely subjective. Uh, you might recall, Stu, that a couple of months ago, a, a British artist uh, sold a piece of invisible art for $18,000. Um, so if you're Hunter Biden and you're trying to uh, collect money from foreign oligarchs, go into the art world. It's subjective. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and basically, you don't have to disclose where the money's coming. Um, and the problem is the Biden administration doesn't seem to take this seriously. Rather than more transparency, their proposed solution is to try to hide it even more. That's what's so absurd about the, uh, the approach that they're taking to this. Isn't, uh, I mean, isn't art and, and high level uh, or at least expensive art? I have no idea if Hunter Biden can paint at all, but if he can, and uh, this sort of art that they're talking about, seventy-five dollars to $500,000 per painting, um, yeah. this sort of level of art is pretty commonly used to move money around in shady ways, is it not? No, that's a great point, Stu. In fact, the U.S. Senate uh, issued a report, I think, in 2019 saying that uh, the art world is rife with money laundering and corruption, uh, that a lot of foreign oligarchs hello, uh, are using the art world to launder uh, illicit profits that they generate overseas. And these oligarchs are in Russia, they're in China and elsewhere. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, the problem. Um, and, you know, look, I'm not going to judge somebody's art. Um, I'm certainly not an art critic. Uh, but the notion that a guy that has no formal training, no background, if his name was Hunter Smith, there'd be no interest in this, is gonna pull in half a million dollars per piece of art is, you know, is absurd. Um, and it's interesting to point out, by the way, Stu, that the, uh, the art uh, uh, director that is working with Hunter Biden, uh, he's got this really interesting French name. Uh, when you look into him, he actually went to Seton Hall University in New Jersey. Um, but this guy's been trying to break into the Chinese art market for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a very, very troubling uh, you know, dynamic that exists. And what the Biden administration has said, Stu, is the way we're going to handle this is we're going to make sure that Hunter doesn't know who's buying his art. You know, that's the solution. Uh, my view is the way you solve these problems is, first of all, you shouldn't be doing it. But if you're going to do it, you have to have as much transparency as possible. And this is where you got to, I probably never thought I'd say these words, you got to give Bill and Hillary Clinton credit. Because when Bill started going around the world collecting these speaking fees uh, and co raising this money, uh, and his wife was a U.S. senator, he and his wife said, we are going to disclose all the speaking fees, who's paying them and where it's coming from. So give the, the uh, Clintons credit. The Bidens are going the opposite route, saying basically, trust us. We'll make sure that Hunter doesn't know, that nobody knows who's paying for this. And it'll be good because we have such a great track record when it comes to these kinds of ethical issues. This is, um, I mean, the author of Clinton Cash is saying that the Clintons are better than the Bidens. That should tell you something significant here. Uh, the Bidens have been, have tried very hard over the years to cover their tracks. Uh, they, they, they do attempt to do this. These rules that they're trying to institute, and you mentioned that Hunter Biden supposedly isn't going to know who's purchasing them. They're not going to release the names of these people. No one's right. going to know anything. And that's their answer to be transparent. And uh, somehow 
keep this above board. I mean, to me, it sounds like the exact opposite of keeping it above board. That's exactly right, Stu. It, it's in, in these particular cases, again, I think this is a terrible idea. Uh, just like, you know, during the Trump administration, I thought it was a terrible idea to have your daughter and your son-in-law working in the White House. Uh, but if you're going to do it, if you're going to do something like this, be transparent about it. Don't don't hide it and don't pretend uh, that, you know, just trust us. We'll make sure that Hunter doesn't know. I mean, imagine if a Chinese oligarch says, I want a commission a piece of art by Hunter Biden, and I want to pay him half a million dollars. And of course, the real agenda maybe is to gain access. How on earth are you going to pretend that Hunter's not going to know something about who the person is or actually know who the person is? It's, it's ridiculous on the face of it. And let's remember, Stu, that so many basic questions beginning in 2018 when we first raised them about the Bidens and these corruption issues, they have repeatedly lied. Uh, they started out by saying that it wasn't true. Hunter Biden had no business deals in China. That was, of course, proven to be incorrect. And they admitted they did. Then their argument became, Stu, that, well, Bill Clinton, uh, sorry, that, that uh, Joe Biden didn't know anything about any of them. And of course, that turned out to not be true. And then they said, well, he did know about it, but they never discussed the issues. Now it comes out, of course, in the Hunter Biden emails that they did discuss the issues. The point is they have a horrible track record as far as trust is concerned, and there is simply no reason why we should trust them. That's why, you know, for example, uh, Barack Obama's ethics czar uh, came out and actually said this is a terrible approach and Joe Biden shouldn't be doing this. They should be transparent and they shouldn't be trying to hide this stuff. Yeah, it's fascinating. As, as part of these rules they're designing so that Hunter Biden can go make half a million dollars a painting, they say that if the person who purchases the painting is revealed, then the White House would be less inclined to do business with them. Now, of course, <laughs> of course, obviously, like a person can uh, could identify themselves privately. A person could identify themselves publicly, but not be the final source of, w of where the business was supposed to be directed. There's so many ways around this. Is this even a serious effort? I mean, why are they even entertaining this? Why don't they say, Hunter, go away for a couple of years. I'm trying to run the country. No, that, that's exactly what they should say. And look, I don't think either you or I are saying that politicians, family members aren't entitled to make a living, but this is not making a living. I mean, this is cashing in. You know, he is a Yale trained attorney. He could go to a law firm. He could practice real estate law. He could, you know, be involved in mergers and acquisitions. There's all kinds of legitimate businesses he could engage in. He's choosing not to do that. And the telltale sign is that in Hunter's, you know, previous career, when he was in international business, he focused overseas on corrupt countries, Ukraine, China, Russia. I mean, he wasn't signing up deals in Japan or in London. Uh, and the telltale sign is the same here. What is he doing? They are seeking and the, the broker that he is working with focuses on international art. And who is buying international art? It's people in China, it's oligarchs in Russia. I mean, it is a target rich environment for this problem. And, and, and they absolutely know this. So I think they're trying to come up with a solution that allows the Bidens to maintain their business model, as it were, Stu, but at the same time sort of tip their hat to the ethic concerns that are being raised, not just by people who don't like Joe Biden, but as I said, Obama's ethics czar himself. And they're trying to thread that needle and, I, needle, and I don't think it's going to work because people are increasingly seeing through what the Bidens are all about, the sort of thing you and I have talked about many times over the last couple of years. Yeah, and you spent uh, years going through in your books outlining how the Biden uh, family really is a family business. It is a business model. Um, I want to get your reaction to this quote from Jen Psaki, who was asked about this. And, and I will say, like, the New York Times wrote an article about this and, and had some criticism in there. Some uh, uh, journalists seem to actually be asking. This seems to be almost a little too far for them to even ignore. But they asked Jen Psaki about this, and she described what we've just talked about. And she said it created, quote, quite a level of transparency. <laughs> I, 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 it's the exact opposite of transparency, isn't it? 
<laughs> this, uh, I think George Orwell had a few words to say about this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the most bizarre defense. I mean, look, you could come up with, you know, look, we 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 have set up a infrastructure to deal with this matter, and we're we're sort of separating, you know, his commercial activities with people. You could you could come up with all kind of verbiage, but to call it transparent, <laughs> it's the exact opposite. Um, look, I don't think Hunter Biden should be doing this. Um, he is not an artist. Uh, he has no training as an artist. Um, he certainly shouldn't be cashing in. But if he's going to do this, the very simple thing to do, Stu, is to say, like Bill Clinton did, any piece of art that Hunter Biden sells will be released to the public uh, on a quarterly basis. And then people can see what people are paying and who is actually buying his art. But, you know, they don't want to do that. And you and I both know why they don't want to do that, uh, because this is the way that the Bidens have operated, not just as Joe Biden is president, not just while he was vice president, but while he was a senator. You know, he is the the political power. He is the the uh, sun around which all the planets, which are the Bidens, move. And it's all predicated on access to political power. So they don't want to reveal who these people are. And I think unless there's push by Democrats on Capitol Hill, they're probably going to get away with it. And that that is a sad situation in America uh, when, you know, we're going to allow any political figure, I don't care who it is, uh, to do this kind of thing. Uh, let me give you one more here and zoom out a little bit on Hunter Biden. Um, it, it's not just the art. There's so many things. You mentioned emails uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago. There are now reports uh, from looks like Hunter Biden's laptop that Joe Biden was absolutely aware of the influence pe peddling that Hunter was doing. He uh, over and over and over again uh, did this in emails. He brought multiple billionaires to meet with Joe Biden at the vice presidential residence. I mean, the media still refuses to cover anything off of this laptop, yet they will put private conversations from ESPN employees, from eight, 15 year old cheerleaders, anything. They don't seem to care about that at all unless it's related to Hunter Biden. Do they have any argument here to not be covering this stuff? No, they don't. And I mean, look, Hunter Biden, when he was uh, out peddling his book, uh, gave interviews and to his credit was asked by a reporter, I think it was with CBS, whether the laptop was his. And he didn't deny it. He said he didn't know, <laughs> which which is a telltale sign that he does know and that it is his. Uh, what I will tell you, Stu, is that that we at Government Accountability Institute have the laptop. We are going through all 30,000 emails. Wow. Um, and, and I will tell you um, that, that uh, a couple of things. First of all, no question Joe Biden was aware of this. Second of all, and we'll be showing more of this down the road, that Joe Biden was a direct, direct beneficiary of what Hunter Biden was doing financially. Wow. The other thing I will tell you is when you take the Hunter Biden laptop and you find an email that says, for example, you know, Hunter is in Dubai this week, and you cross-reference that with the Secret Service travel logs of Hunter Biden that were released by Senator Johnson's report, they line up absolutely perfectly. So my point is, there are independent ways to corroborate what are in the emails, and they are absolutely uh, accurate. On top of that, I'll mention that we have access to emails of a couple of Joe Biden's business partners um, who are uh, actually in prison. Um, and when you check their email collection with uh, correspondence with Hunter Biden, the emails are exactly the same. So. I had some suspicions early on whether this laptop, you know, was completely accurate or if maybe somebody had fiddled with it. There is no question. This is 100 percent. Everything that I've seen is accurate and can be independently corroborated. And it is a ticking time bomb for the Bidens. Wow. I, that's big news. I mean, guys, Peter Schweitzer has the laptop. This is, <laughs> we're going to know what is on it and what is going on. Peter, uh, you've been working so hard for actual transparency for so many years, and we really appreciate the work you're doing and everybody over the Government Accountability Institute. Uh, of course, you are the author as well of so many great books, uh, including Profiles in Corruption, uh, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite. Thank you so much for doing this. And if you ever need to just, uh, you know, send me over a hard drive with a copy of the laptop, feel free. Absolutely, Stu. It's always great to see you. Thank you.